How's it going, folks? Nick here with the Tieta Firm Agriculture vlog. I'm up here at Austin Rosa today working, and uh, we're actually working on the swale project. So just a couple days ago, I had a little uh, kind of intro to where, what we're doing with this swale. Uh, I'll leave that linked above if you didn't see it. Um, it's just up here. And uh, yeah, so yesterday we were down here and we started cutting it in and making it more of an actual kind of swale and actually making it more uh, level, etc. So let's give you a little update on it. So here's, here's the work we did yesterday. Uh, compared to before, this is pretty much, uh, we dug out, we dug basically into the slope here and then started to dig away all this to create this little small little bowl here. It's kind of a bowl shaped thing, bowl shaped swale that helps hold the water nice and passively. And then the base of the swale here is, uh, needs to be right on contour, so right uh, level essentially. You want it to be a level surface uh, with, the, with the swale at the bottom or a very, very slight grade, maybe a 1% grade, kind of going away from if you want to direct the water a little bit. We spent a couple hours yesterday digging this out and you can see here we're in super heavy clay. Um, so it takes quite a bit of work to do this and we're doing this all by hand. So most swale installs go with uh, machines to do most of the heavy lifting and the big work for us, but uh, we don't have heavy machines here. So we're just doing it by hand and poco a poco, as they say here, little by little. So you can see this is a nice, large, uncompacted mound. So all of this right here, we're not throwing this on and compacting it and making it like a certain shape. We're just throwing it on, it's loose. And then we're gonna slowly just kind of help make this a little, this little natural bowl shape. So the reason you do that is because naturally with the, as the soil starts eroding a little bit with the natural rain flows, et cetera, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna always start to kind of slump. And it usually makes kind of like a shape where it kind of goes down and then in kind of has that little bowl. It's like a side of a bowl, basically. Um, so we, if you naturally put that in when you start doing all the work, it's less likely to actually erode long-term. So we're trying to put that in uh, right from the beginning. You can see here that the swale, uh, that pretty much the top, it's only ever gonna be probably about this full. It's never gonna be all the way up to the top of that mound. And that's really important on a swale. You don't want the water to be overflowing over this swale bank. Um, because that's going to end up causing erosion for you um, long term. So you never want to go above that. So what you have to do is also when you have a swale and you're installing swales, you also want to consider where you're going to uh, spill all that excess water. If you have too much water filling the swale, how are you going to spill that and where are you going to spill that? So what we're going to end up doing is at the end of the swale here. So this is kind of where it's ending, uh, you know, right around here. It'll probably go a little bit further once we cut in a little bit, but We'll basically have an overflow starting around here and it'll actually go into the forest a little bit. So with swales, you don't really want to add a swale into an existing forest because the forest is already harvesting water. Remember, swales are water harvesting features. They're soaking water into the ground. So you got to be careful about where you're placing swales um, because you can easily place them somewhere where you actually uh, soak too much water and end up causing a problem for your system. Um, especially if you're at, you know, a really kind of soggy area, it's already soggy where you are, a swale probably is not going to help you too much because it's going to soak even more water in. So think about that. Also think about placement, make sure you're not placing a swale like above a, a building foundation or something like that. Um, Cause that's also once basically right here, Let's look at the landscape, the overall kind of landscape here. Um, as the water flows down this, this slope here, up here is probably gonna be our kind of production area. We're gonna do main crops, uh, cropping, maybe a market garden-like thing right up here. So as the water flows down this slope, it'll hit the swale and so our swale basically will catch water from that kind of palm chunk straight down right here. And it'll catch all the water from this little ridge and so any of that water as it flows down when we have those major rain events it's going to come down the hill hit the swale and then it's going to stay in the swale it's going to basically sink and just be right in here and within this swale all it'll be it can fill pretty much up to a meter of water about three feet full of water that's how we're designing it um, basically from bottom to top and obviously as it widens out you have a little bit more space there and the water will basically hit here and then we're going to as it soaks in, it's gonna basically soak all of this. So all of the stuff down here is gonna get extra water. So you really have to think about what you're planting. Are they gonna like extra water? Things like, you know, bananas, we're gonna be perfectly fine with a little bit of extra water. And on this mound, on the swale mound itself, because it's a nice raised area, this area can actually be planted to trees 
and that's what swales are. Swales are tree growing systems. So you're always planting trees if you're doing a swale. If you're not planting trees when you're doing a swale, you're doing something wrong. So just keep that in mind. Um, so at the top of the mound here, you can plant trees and we actually already had trees planted. So we're just kind of adding soil on top here. So that's kind of the, our process right now. This is kind of, this was dug out and uh, originally after Maria, they basically just piled a bunch of logs here and kind of started cutting a very basic little cut in here. Um, that was about uh, almost three years ago now. So they've kind of slowly created this little terrace area. Um, and then we're just kind of digging in to create a little swale system for them here. Um, and so as all the water flows down the slope, hits the swale, uh, it's, we got to think about which way is it going to overflow. So right down there, we have the sugar shack, which is a rental property. So we don't want the water to overflow on that side of the swale because otherwise it's going to flow right down into the, into the sugar shack. So all of our overflow, we want to come towards us. So this way through the swale, turn around, come this way down the swale and then exit. And our goal is basically just let it exit into the forest because the forest is already take caring, taking care of all that kind of excess rainwater. We don't have to think too much about that at all. So uh, right in here, that's where we want our soil to spill. However, we don't really want to destroy any of the environment. So we're kind of also considering we can move into that a little bit because there's already kind of a little uh, pathway. You can see there's kind of a level terrace pathway right here. Uh, this was probably put in quite some time ago. I think they're probably their grandfathers. So this is an area that's kind of disturbed already. So it doesn't really, won't really hurt the system per se if we actually come in here and cut a little bit in here um, because we can basically just have it, the swale come into here and then this is the spillway right here. It's actually already pretty much a flat compacted area, um, which is kind of what you want your spillway to be. So this is where we're gonna try to do our primary spill right into here. And then we're probably gonna end up having a secondary spill right here towards the end of this swale maybe kind of starting right there and going into the forest so that if our forest uh, spillway is is not enough to handle the flow rate uh, we have a secondary one that can take a little bit of that pressure off the system um, again you always want to make sure that you plan in a spillway to make your system last longer if you don't basically what will happen is in those big rain events this will fill up and then your water will start overflowing over this top bank and if your water overflows there, it's going to start causing erosion. You can have a blowout in your swale. It's not going to be kind of the end of the world for you. Uh, basically, it'll destroy that. It might destroy some of your plantings and everything, but you can easily kind of re, uh, you can fix it. You know, it's easy to fix. Uh, it's not, it's not kind of the end of the world, luckily. I'm like a dam wall. If you have a dam wall and that fails and it sends a whole bunch of water everywhere, that's a little bit bigger of an issue. If a swale fails, it's basically just gonna run water down slope wherever it failed, wherever the failure point is. So if it failed right near this uh, plantain right here, it'll basically break right there, flow down here, and we're just making sure that anywhere below where we're soaking all that, we're not gonna have some major uh, infrastructure that uh, may or may not be uh, harmed by that. So. You can see here, we have a nice level flat area right here, but it's only about a foot or two wide. So we're gonna end up cutting further into the bank here just to create a nice, right at the bottom here, a nice level area. And then we're gonna, across contour all the way up there, we're going to uh, use an A-frame level and make sure that as we go, that this swale is perfectly level or it has a drop very slightly this way, um, about 1% grade. So, it's important once you're once you do all this kind of work that you then plan in stability a plan in for planting so up here in the bottom of the swale here likely will end up being grass just like up there so that's kind of going to be end up what it looks like long term kind of grassy at the bottom probably and then this whole bank is a planting bank so uh, on this side of the swale mound here, it's gonna be much wetter because this is where the water's gonna fill. So here we can put things uh, like taro or uh, malanga or jautia here in Puerto Rico. Things that like water, don't mind having wet feet. They can go right on this inside edge here. Um, and those things like the taros and uh, kind of the cocoa yam, kind of, things kind of like that. That stuff is perfectly fine with being wet. In fact, enjoys that little bit of a wetter uh, environment. So it's perfect to plant right there. Uh, on the mound itself, 
This is the planting area designed for trees. It gives it a little bit more drainage, but also plenty of water from the soil soakage. So this is a nice place to plant trees. Um, probably not say like an avocado or something that really needs that like deep drainage, about four foot of drainage. This is probably not gonna be a, the greatest system for that because it is gonna be soaking a decent amount of water. But anything that likes a decent amount of water um, in the tropical climates, then that'd be perfect to put on that soil mound. On the other side, of the swale mound on this side this will be the drier side and it's also facing west in this case in our context that's kind of west right towards the mountain there so on this side it's going to be kind of more hotter and dry on the outside end of the swale mound here and so on that side we can plant things that like a little bit more uh, dryness uh, maybe like uh, juca cassava um, that's what they kind of they call it juca here in puerto rico um, that can kind of go on the far edge of the swale mound here along the edge. So basically we can create this swale mound and this becomes our planting area. And on this inside edge, we plant wet loving species. On the outside edge, we plant less wet loving species, you know, still like water, but not huge, huge amounts. Uh, ju juca here is kind of perfect for that. And then on the top of the mound, we plant kind of our tree systems. So at the top of this little swale here, what we're gonna end up planting actually is uh, a combination of lemongrass and vetiver grass, um, both of which are really good in helping with erosion control um, and also have really, they basically have really deep root systems that kind of go down and really hold together the soil. So right above our swale, where we want to make sure that we're not losing any stability right along here, that's where we're going to be planting. So we're going to plant those pretty much right. So if this is the swale right here, it kind of ends probably about this level. That's just about the level of the top here. If you're looking at the camera, I'm trying to give you a nice little indication there, but it's about this level right here. So right up here, we're gonna plant this little strip. We're gonna plant the vetiver grass and lemongrass, um, and that's gonna help hold up this part of the hill before it gets into the swale. And it'll also provide like a last little uh, uh, erosion control for many of the water coming down. It'll hit those that grass once they kind of grow out a little bit. That'll help keep this band nice and stable, and then all that excess water can flow down and into the swale. So yeah, that's a, that's a swale. I'm gonna be working on this today. So I'm just gonna film a little bit of me doing a little bit of work here. Um, and we're gonna hopefully plant some of that vetiver. I'll show you what, I'm, what the vetiver is. If you've never seen vetiver, we have little plugs that they just got recently. So this right here is the vetiver grass. Beautiful grass, it's actually, uh, it, it's medicinal, it's apparently a mosquito repellent too. So there's lots of things that it can be uh, useful for, and especially especially useful for erosion control. Um, it has really, really deep uh, root systems, hairnet root system that goes super deep. So it can actually uh, bring up a lot of moisture and everything. So it'll help control how much moisture is actually getting into the soil before it gets there. Yeah, vetiver is really good for erosion control. So that's what we're gonna be using it for here. And uh, lemongrass does very similar. Uh, Vetiver has a little bit deeper root system, so that's gonna kind of be our strong erosion control, but uh, lemongrass does a very similar, has a very similar structure um, of, of growth. So it also has nice deep, deep roots, nice hairnet roots that can help hold together uh, hillside. And both of them have a product. So we're also, we're using vetiver not only as a erosion control, but it's also being used as a product that we could harvest and used. And also you can take it and just keep on dividing it and create more and more plants. So that can end up being something that we sell long-term or just divide out and put throughout the property wherever we need some erosion control. All right, well, I'm gonna get going on some uh, digging here. I'm gonna kind of continue to shape this mound here and uh, make it so that it's a little bit, a little bit more smooth. And I gotta go find our A-frame and uh, basically start leveling the base of this swale right here to make sure that we're nice and right on contour and, uh, and level at the base of this swale. That's gonna be the goal today, that's what I'm working on. And uh, I may or may not check in at the end of this.
just finished up today. And this is the swale as it's at its finalized state for now. We just mulched it, so you can't really see as well as you probably could have, but uh, basically all down here, nice flat. This is all on contour with a flat base, about three feet, about a meter wide here. Nice, easy access for a wheelbarrow up and down. So that adds to access when it's not completely soaking wet, at least. From this side, we basically, as we added to the mounds down here afterwards, we just mulched all these because it was all really fresh soil, so we wanted to protect it. And then up here, at the very top of our cut, we pinned down some banana trunks and implanted our vetiver grass that I was talking about earlier. So right there, along here, every six inches, we have vetiver. Uh, this is an erosion control plant, also a medicinal plant, and we'll be able to use that in the future for both the market and for our own uh, products. And because we have so many, we'll actually be able to kind of separate them out and spread them wherever we want on the property. So I'm gonna kind of walk you down the swale now, looking at the actual swale. Here we are. So right in the middle here is where we are. It's all on contour, it's flat until right about here and it drops down slightly, just because that's how the landscape worked. And then here we have our spillway. So we actually have two spillways. The first one is just like a small little divot, goes right here and into the forest, like I was talking about earlier. Just comes right along here and it'll just spill down and into the forest down here. And the second spillway is actually underneath this mulch right here move it a little bit for you so you can see. So in minor events, water will come down the swale, hit this little small little, uh, little it's just a little bit of a shallow depression right here, and it'll hit that and move into the woods, like I just said. And those major events, there's a full meter long uh, opening here that it can then flow over right here and down into the woods right here too. So we have a double spillway system, just in case for those big, big heavy rain events. And here's the view from this side. Really cool looking feature on a property. It's a beautiful feature. Tree growing system, water harvesting system. Uh, needs a little bit of planning and a little bit of uh, math to make sure you do it right. But once you learn that, it's not so hard. And uh, we just did all that by hand. It's usually much easier if you have a uh, machine to help you, but we can do it by hand here. And we're in heavy clay. So pretty much anywhere can probably do this by hand. So. Uh, I'll do another video at some point kind of explaining more about swales, so uh, stay tuned for that. But for now, hope you all have a good one, and until uh, next time, I'll see ya.